they firm nine above. So it's always a, a blessing, a blessing to uh, to rock with the sisters, man. It's always a blessing. So. Treason in the church. Yeah, they, we got hit over the head with this. This came over my desk. Came over to Enoch, man. And uh, I think it deserves some type of attention. Let's check it out. We're looking for food. Treason in the church, man. Real conspiracies. Let's check it out. Trading truth for social gospel. Trading truth for a social gospel. Treason. What is treason? The act or attempted act of working for the enemies of the state. Betrayals of trust, disloyalty. According to the Webster Dictionary, that's what treason means. The act or attempted act of working for the enemies of your state. Betrayal of trust, disloyalty. What are you talking about, man? Some even believe we, the Rockefellers. Oh, this about the Rockefellers. Some even believe we, the Rockefellers, are part of a secret cobble working against the best interests of the United States. So this was uh, uh, David Rockefeller in his own words, probably. All right. He says, some even believe we, the Rockefellers are part of a secret cobble working against the best interests of the United States, characterizing my family and me as internationalists and of conspiring with others around the world to build a more in integrated global political and economic structure. One world, if you will. If that's the charge, I stand guilty. I am proud of it. This was David Rockefeller memoirs. Rockefeller provided support or provides support to 220 churches and missionary organizations of his own denomination. Baptists as well as to about 80 institutions and other denominations to more than 160 social welfare and moral reform organizations and institutions and to more than 100 schools and universities Rockefeller archives he says we should no longer be children tossed and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men no actually he didn't say this this is in Ephesians we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting Ephesians 4 and 14 and 15 mm. so what are they talking about is that talking about your boy Rockefeller I don't know, but I know he got a, it's a long line and it leads from the Rockefellers to, to this cat they call Schiff. Jacob Schiff. I guess he did a real job for Rockefeller, man, and, um, in trying to basically control the mass media, starting minority group stripes, you know what I'm saying? Dr destroying unity um, trying creating a movement to destroy Christianity not the fake Christianity the real Christianity the real Christianity right so uh, so I guess this control of the mass media, which was like the press in 1907, because that's when this, this when this uh, Jacob Schiff started these organizations, right? But the beautiful thing is that they couldn't get the media, but they got people like um, 
Sam Newhouse, if y'all do some research in him, like Henry Luce, Eugene Myers, these three dudes are head owners of all the top magazines. I'm talking about from the Washington Post to Life, Time Magazine, you know what I'm saying? All your top magazines and what do you think they put in, man? These dudes are the creators of the NAACP. Yeah, Rockefeller, his, remember, five million that he put towards the NAACP? His money, but he had this guy Schiff. This guy Jacob Schiff. He the one who put it together. Yeah, the NAACP, the National Association for Advancement for Colored People, right? And also, they got bought a whole bunch of writers. A whole bunch of writers, man. We talking about they control the motion picture industry. So all your forms of of media, they control. And also, the Pope. All this is down conglomerati with the Pope. So hold on, man. Let's check out some Infiltration and deception have been tools of conspirators through the ages. And the church has been a primary target after all. God warns us that the role, that the whole world is under the sway of the evil one. That's in 1 John 5 and 19. One of his most effective schemes is to redefine Hawa's word and divert Christians from his unchanging truth to man's shifting want and ideas. For example, Hawa calls us to serve the poor and fill the hearts with love for the needy. That's why his true followers around the world have willingly given their lives to share his truth and love in perilous places. But today's world-centered churches illustrates a different kind of service. Designed to please man rather than Hawa, it trains its servers to hide the offensive truths of the gospel, to hide them. Because they're already serving the poor and filling the hearts with love for the needy. Like Rick Warren, it uses the Bible to validate its purposes but emphasizes origin, organization, organization behavior rather than Bible beliefs. Organizational behavior rather than Bible beliefs. Organizational behavior. Behavior for their organization rather than Bible beliefs. In short, deeds instead of creeds. Deeds instead of creeds. Behind its noble appearance hides a postmodern version of the century old Christian socialism. The social gospel councils of churches and Fabian socialism, called Father of Social Gospel. Walter Rauschenbusch in 1861 and 1918 grew up in German Lutheran immigrant family in New York. He studied theology at the University of Rochester, one of hundreds of educational and Christian institutions funded by John D. Rockefeller. After pastoring a Baptist church among poor immigrants in New York City for a few years, he joined the faculty at Rochester Theological Seminary. Also funny by Rockefeller in 1902 he became its professor of the church history from this prominent platform he wrote books such as Christianizing the Social Order and a theology for the social gospel steeped in higher criticism and socialist ideology he taught what many considered a more relevant and compassionate gospel right as a result he changed both the emphasis and direction of, Ameri of American protestantism, uh, product, uh, product, you know, 
Protestant Protestantism American Protestantism Rothschild Rothschild introduced Jesus not as one not as one not as one who would come to save sinners from their sins but as one who had a social passion for society he and his comrades established the brotherhood of the kingdom which unified like-minded church leaders under a common socialist guest for earthly kingdom of god so rashimbus introduced jesus as one who would come to save sinners from their sins not as one who would come to save sinners from their sins but as one who had a social passion for society he and his comrades established a brotherhood of the kingdom which unified like-minded churches leaders under a common socialist quest for earthly kingdom of god their plan would have fit our times it called for political reform uh economic economical unity that means just a uh, broad unity from all different areas and vastes of people social justice the global peace to justify its place in christian theology words like redemption and regeneration were redefined to fit their social ideas sounds familiar doesn't it popular church leaders use the same strategy today Pastor Brian McLaren recent book The Sacred Message of Jesus twists Hawa's words into an endorsement of an earthly interfaith kingdom like wise Tony Campolo's hope of earthly perfection mocks the biblical promise of eternal life The gospel is not about pie in the sky when they die It is imperative that the up and coming generation recognized that the biblical how a sure was committed to the realization of a new social order in this world becoming a christian therefore is a call to social action in 1907 rashimbus met with the leaders of fabian social socialism in england sydney webb and betrice potter webb unlike impatient marxist revolutionaries the uh the method of coal the meth the method of coal fabians emphasized peaceful transformation through propaganda and infiltration of universities seminaries and churches so i don't know if y'all keeping up man what they're saying is that basically david rockefeller formed all these organizations to basically to infiltrate Christianity, the true religion. By creating this, like we said, this old passive political Yeshua. And for you to be for you to choose that Yeshua which is choosing Satan. And um, it's not choosing uh, Yahshua to worship. It's actually choosing a Yahshua to believe. You're gonna believe what this Yahshua said, or you're gonna believe what this Yahshua said. One words of Yahshua said was direct words from Hawa, for there were his words. coming out of a mouth a clay the other one was a leader a king trying to get you to politically side with him so that everything could go smooth and he can continue to get rich
So through the years, the socialist movement grew to include Bertrand Russell, H.G. Wells who wrote Open Conspiracy, playwright George Bernard Shaw, Sinclair Lewis, uh, theosophical, theosophical leader Annie Besant, and the communist leader Harry Dexter White who worked as Alger Hiss to establish the United Nations. It spread through Western nations. We talking about this is NATO. It spread through Western nations, thanks in part to literal, liberal, these liberal institutions, these liberal societies, these liberal churches that preach this message as if backed by the authority of Hawa. As you saw in part one, the Rockefellers and other powerful change agents fueled this movement. Their funding would sway universities, seminaries, and churches from coast to coast, including the prominent Riverside Church in Manhattan, built in 1930 as a useful pulpit for the liberal teachings of Pastor Harry Emerson Fosdick. It helped turn countless students from the nearby Union Theological Seminary into ardent promoters of a socialist agenda. According to Leonard Sweet, Fosdick viewed the Fabian Ruschenbusch as his hero. The Rockefeller Foundation led by Fosdick brother Raymond for three decades, 30 years, supported psycho-social research through Hitler's eugenics program. Yeah, Rockefeller also funded Hitler through London's Tavistock Institute as through various American universities and institutions. This new science would raise propaganda, persuasion, and mind control to ever more sophisticated levels. Because remember, they're hiring all these people, these professional people for this psychosocial research. We're talking about universities, institutions, sophisticated levels of mind control. With Rockefeller support, Ruschenbusch and his Fabian protege, Reverend Harry Ward, helped establish the Federal Council of Churches, FCC, in 1908. Reverend Ward, through his Soviet connections and influential positions, will become the main source of the communist infiltration into the FCC later known NCC National Council of Christ then they changed it to National Council of Churches but at first it was called National Council of Christ or something like that <sighs> so through his Soviet connections and influential positions now, when I say through a Soviet connections, don't think it was we talking about the good side of the Soviet. There's a good side and there's a bad side, just like here. So through the, through the, through the bad side, the illuminaries of the social connections and influence, influential positions will become the main source of communist infiltration into the FCC, later, later renamed the NCC, National Council of Churches, Christian Seminaries and compassionate, uh, unsuspecting pastors and congregations across the country, hard to believe, then looked at the evidence below. Then look at the evidence below. The evidence that the National Council of Churches, Christian seminaries, and compassionate, unsuspecting pastors and congregations across the countries are involved communist infiltration. The follow testimonies were given under oath before the committee on an un-American on un-American activities of the US House of Representatives, 83rd Congress in July 1953. Robert Kunzig, chief counsel for the committee, asked the questions. Manning Johnson, formerly a top member of the Communist Party, answered this particular set of questions. All right, this was on page 2000 266 of the Congressional Record. Kanzik, 
The name Harry Ward has appeared in so many of these various, various organizations and groups. It seems as if there is almost an interlacing tie-up through various sects and denominations. Have you any comment to make on this situation? Johnson. Yes, I have. Dr. Harry F. Ward, for many years, has been the chief architect for communist infiltration and subversion, subversion in the religious field. Subversion. According to this congressional report, Harry Ward also taught Christian ethics at Union Theological Seminary, funded by the Rockefellers, presided over the Federal Council of Churches, chaired by American Civil Liberties Union, and worked with the YMCA, YMCA, and the Interchurch World Movement. Now you're talking about hijack. Page 2070. Johnson, I would first like to read to you what William Z. Foster, General Secretary of the Communist Party USA, has to say on this matter. Communists must ever be keen to cultivate the democratic spirit of mutual tolerance amongst the religious sects. A still greater lesson for us to learn, however, is how to work freely with religious strata for the accomplishment of a democratic mass objectives. A very serious mistake of the American left wing during many years has been his attempt arbitrarily to wave aside religious sentiments among the masses. Reactionary forces mainly concerned Christians have already known how to take advantage of this short-sighted sectarian order, I mean error. In recent years, however, the Communist Party, with this political of the outstretched hand, meaning they got so many people in different areas, has done much to overcome the harmful left-wing narrowness of former years and to develop a more healthier corporation with the religious masses. Kungsit, was deceit a major policy of the communist propaganda and activity? Mr. Johnson, yes, it was. They may find gestures and honeyed words to the church people, which could be well likened until the song of the fabled sea nymphs luring millions to moral decay, spiritual death, and spiritual slavery. So what he basically saying is that the communists who conspire to, well not conspire, who main purpose is to break up Christianity and the teachings of Yahshua, of Hawashua, right? Which are the teachings of Moses, which are the teachings of the Most High, okay? which Yahshua, the seed of David, was given charge by the Most High. So, so what they're trying to do is infiltrate that, right? Because why? Because once we all, right, once we all be able to get on one accord once we all be able to unify like uh hitler said once them niggas wake up <laughs> once they see that they have been captured that they are hawaii's jury and the only thing that's going to bring them together is their heart is their compassion for one another and the only way they're going to be able to do that if they follow Christ, follow Yahshua, Yahshua showed you how to do that, Hawa showed you how to do that, so I mean, the Hamashiach, there's levels to this shit, every time you were sent prophets, you were sent Hamashiachs to show you what the fuck to do. I don't know why that's so difficult right now. 
obviously you can see you don't know what to do I mean damn <laughs> seriously man so how do we know what to do we look at what Hawa sent us he sent us a Hamashiach damn man but you choose to worship what when it says there is no one beside the creator do you know what that means oh, man. so when he sent you Moses to give you the commandments was there anyone beside the creator then no right because everything Moses said was Hawa right oh okay so what's so hard about that what's so hard about that so now Sakari since you still waiting for David Sakari since you still waiting for Elijah Sakari since you still waiting on who who you waiting on The prophecy has to be fulfilled, man. Shem. This prophecy is for Shem. And the only way you're going to know is through what you don't, by doing what you don't have to do because you don't understand what you have to do. You don't understand that the prophecy, the mark that you're missing, is your heart. Because the law can't get you there by itself. The law ain't going to give you the heart because you have no direction of heart to follow. How you going to know how to open up your suffers? How you going to know how your heart? You know what I'm saying? How you going to know? How you going to know? So the most high teaching is through these sectums. Yahshua is that sectum to salvation, to freedom, to the promised land. That's why I said, that's why he said, the, mo, the Most High said, Moses, you can't go to the promised land because you don't have what it takes. I am putting charge into my seed, my, this seed, same seed, into Yahshua. To my fearless, my fearless seed. The one who is not going to be afraid for his life. Because, check this out. This is the most high. Check this out. Because when I send this, this evil upon you, right? If I don't send this evil upon you, and when I send this evil upon you, if these people don't think that it's a head that they must cut off then they'll cut off all your heads they'll cut off all your heads so since I have mercy on you I'm gonna just make these people think that they just must kill the Messiah instead of killing all all of Israel all of Judah all of Jacob So man, at the end of the day, you don't know what the Most High know. So get with this Ruach. Overstand this flow. Because this is your flow, this is your Ruach. Like they said, they wanted you to denounce the whole thing. And that's what you're doing. You're denouncing the whole thing, man. Because you don't see your Ruach. But you disconnecting from your Ruach because you're not fulfilling the prophecy. You anti this, you anti that. But then, you still got Christmas trees in your house. You still bumping with the Esther eggs. You still rocking with the, the Easter bunny. Stop playing. Stop playing talking about laws. 
that you're not following or that you can't follow. Stop talking about a culture that you ain't following. For it's nonsense, man. It's a way up, man. It's a way to vibrate up. Shekinah. You gotta use your heart, man. <laughs> Let's go, warrior. Alright, man, so let me not. So after we understand that, right? So... This is where the Methodist Church gets into it. The Methodist Federation for the Social Service for the Methodist Federation of Social Action. So they started all this, man, through this Methodist movement. This was a Communist Party movement. The party was able to get contacts with thousands of ministers all over the country. Okay? So they started this. Quite a few members, for example, participated in this united front known as the American League Against War and Fascism. In fact, they were so deeply involved through Harry Ford, Harry F. Ward, that they became the spokesmen, the advocates, the builders, and the leaders of this most important communist front that engaged in everything from simple assault on the government to espionage, sabotage, and the overthrow of the government. I'm going to hit you all over the head with this link. So you can see where they're willing to admit it to a congressional board. This communist party. And let me hit you with John 17, 14 and 17. I have given them your word. And the world has hated them because they are not of this world. Just as I am not of this world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is true. Yeah, man. We not of this world, man. You see what they doing. I'm going to hit y'all over here with this archive. But, uh. I'm going to hit y'all over here with that archive. Check this little drop out. There's the link right there. Illuminati Rockefeller got Methodist Reverend Harry F. Ford to destroy Christianity. Y'all sit tight, man. Anything about the 80,000 Russian Mongolian troops that occupy Hungary. Where was the UN when the Hungarian freedom fighters were slaughtered by the Russians? Do you know that the UN and its peace army turned the Congo over to the communists? Do you know that the UN's own so-called peace force was used to crush, rape, and kill the white anti-communist in Katanga? Do you know that the UN stood by and... So the UN helped. The UN helped the communists destroy people who were trying to stop the communists in Africa and all over the world. It did nothing while Red China invaded Laos and Vietnam, that it did nothing while Nehru invaded Gore and other Portuguese territories. Do you know that the UN was directly responsible for aiding Castro? That it does absolutely nothing about the many thousands of Cuban youngsters who are shipped to Russia for communist indoctrination. Do you know that Adlai Stevenson, of all people, said the free world must expect to lose more and more decisions in the UN. Do you know that the UN openly proclaims that its chief objective is one world government, which means one world laws, one world court, one world army, one world navy, one world air force, one world school, and a one world church in which Christianity would be prohibited? Do you know that a U.N. law has been passed to disarm all American citizens and to transfer all our armed forces to the U.N.? 
That a law was secretly signed by St. Jack Kennedy in 1961. Do you realize how that fits in with Article 47, Paragraph 3 of the UN Charter, which states, I quote, The Military Staff Committee of the UN shall be responsible through the Security Council for the strategic direction of all armed forces placed at the disposal of the Security Council. Unquote. And when and if all our armed forces are transferred to the UN, your sons would be forced to serve and die under UN command all over the world. This will happen unless you fight to get the U.S. out of the U.N. Do you know that Congressman J Fight to get the U.S. out of the United Nations. Getting the U.S. out of the United Nations. Hmm. Getting America out of the United Nations. James B. Up has submitted a bill to get the U.S. out of the U.N and a resolution to prevent our president from forcing us to support the UN embargoes on Rhodesia. Well, he has. And many people all over the country are writing to their representatives to support the UP bill and resolution. And did you know that to offset the UP bill and resolution, 50 congressmen, spearheaded by Schweiker and Moorhead of Pennsylvania, have introduced a bill to immediately transfer all our armed forces to the U.N. Can you imagine such brazen treason? Is your congressman one of those 50 traitors? Find out and take immediate action against him and help congressman up. How do you know that the National Council of Churches passed a resolution in San Francisco which states that the United States will soon have to subordinate its will to that of the UN, and that all American citizens must be prepared to accept it. Is your church a member of the National Council of Churches? In connection with that. Is your church a member of the National Council of Churches or National Council of, or Church of Christ? Let's see if they're national because it's a gimmick. They're partnered in with Rockefeller. Rockefeller is funding the whole damn thing to persuade your teachings of the Hamashiach. To persuade your teachings of the Most High. Bear in mind that the God is never mentioned in the UN Charter and their meetings are never opened with prayer. The creators of the UN stipulated in advance that there should be no mention of God or Jesus Christ in the UN Charter or in its UN headquarters. Does your pastor subscribe to that? Find out. Furthermore, do you know that the great majority of the so-called nations in the UN are anti-Christianity? that the UN is a completely godless organization by orders of its creators, the CFR Illuminati. Now, that's the Council of Foreign Relations. Yeah, that's Rockefeller. Council of Foreign Rela Relations. That's who you can give prize to. All these organizations and institutions. The Council of Foreign Relations. CFR. Have you heard enough of the truth about the Illuminati United Nations? Do you want to leave your sons and our precious country to the unholy mercy of the Illuminati United Nations? If you don't, write, telegraph, or phone your representatives and senators that they must support Congressman Up's bill to get the U.S. out of the U.N. and the U.N. out of the U.S. Do it today, now, before you forget. It is the only salvation for you. Get the UN out of the United States. Get the United States. Get America out of the UN.
Yes, sir. First son, and for our country. Now I have one more vital message to deliver. As I told you, one of the four specific assignments Rothschild gave Jacob Schiff was to create a movement to destroy religion in the United States, with Christianity to be the chief target. For a very obvious reason, the Anti-Defamation League wouldn't dare to attempt it, because Section of the Eighth, the most terrible bloodbath in the history of the world, not only for the ADL and the conspirators, but for the millions of innocent Jews. Schiff turned that job over to Rockefeller for another specific reason. The destruction of Christianity could be accomplished only by those who are entrusted to preserve it, by the pastors, the men of the poor. As a starter, John B. Rockefeller picked up a young so-called Christian minister by the name of Dr. Harry F. Ward, Reverend Ward, if you please. At that time, he was teaching religion at the Union Theological Seminary. Rockefeller found a very willing Judas in this Reverend. Thereupon, in 1907, he financed him to set up the Methodist Foundation of Social Service. And Ward's job was to teach bright young men to become so-called ministers of Christ and to place them as pastors of churches. While teaching them to become ministers, the Reverend Ward also taught them how to very subtly and craftily preach to their congregations that the entire story of Christ is a myth, to cast doubts on the divinity of Christ, to cast doubts about the Virgin Mary, in short, to cast doubts on Christianity as a whole. It was not to be a direct attack, but much of it by crafty insinuation that was to be applied in particular to the youth in the Sunday schools. Remember Lenin's statement, give me just one generation of youth and I'll transform the whole world. Then, in 1908, the Methodist Foundation of Social Service which incidentally was America's... 1907-1908 Methodist Service First Communist Front Organization changed its name to the Federal Council of Churches. By 1950, the Federal Council of Churches was becoming very suspect. So in 1950, they changed the name to the National... Federal Council of Churches changed their name in 1950. The Methodist services changed their name in 1907. 1950 changed their name to the National Council of Churches, from the federal to the National Council of Churches. So it's the same Methodist movement, the same Methodist service center movement, the same organization, the same fake liberals. National Council of Churches. Do I have to tell you more about how this National Council of Churches is deliberately... De but first, before the National Council of Churches, they called it the National Church of Christ. That's what they called it at first. Then they had to change the name. Then they changed the name because it was getting too suspect. Then they changed it to the National Council of Churches. Destroying faith in Christianity? I don't think so. But this I will tell you. If you are a member of any congregation whose pastor and church are members of this Judas organization, you, your contributions, are helping the Illuminati's plot to destroy religion and your faith in God and Jesus Christ. Thus you are deliberately delivering your children to be indoctrinated with this belief in God and church and which can easily transform them into atheists. Find out immediately if your church is a member of the National Council of Churches. And for the love of God and your children, if it is, withdraw from it at once. However, let me warn you, that same destroy religious process has been infiltrated into other denominations. If you have seen the Negro March on Selma, and other such demonstrations, you have seen how the Negro mobs are led and encouraged 
by ministers and even Catholic priests and nuns who march along with them. As a matter of fact, the Mormon Church is about the only one I know of that is clean of that kind of Judas infiltration. But of course, there are many individual churches and pastors who are honest and sincere. Find one such for yourself and for your children. Incidentally, this same Reverend Harry F. Ward was also one of the founders of the American Civil Liberties Union, a notorious pro- ACL. ACL. Yeah, I dropped a link over that, but yeah, it's the real spill, man. Y'all check out that Methodist, Methodist Federation for Social Action. That's what it started. All right, but right now, we got a list of the National Council Church members. All right, let me blow that up real quick, quick. All right. Thought I was going to hit you with a list? You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You thought wrong, man. Then you had you on the wrong you on you on the wrong page. You on the wrong everything, man. You know I'm gonna hit you with that list. This is a list of the National Council of Churches members. All right. This is mentions the individual member organizations of the National Council of Churches of Christ in the USA in the United States. So we got a lot of African Methodists, Methodists, Episcopals, Episcopal church are predominantly African American the AME is a predominantly African American domination based on in the United States it is the first independent Protestant denomination to be founded by black people what is that ain't that some, some it's Russia but I don't know you know what I'm saying It ain't the right Russia. African Methodist Episcopal Zion, same thing. It is a historically African American denomination based in the United States. Was officially formed in 1821 in New York City, but operated for a number of years before then. Alliance Baptist is a Fellowship Baptist Church individual. American Baptist. This is in Pennsylvania. Diocese of Armenian Church. Assyrian Church of East. Christian Church Disciples of Christ. But what are they teaching? What are they teaching you? Just letting you know right now what they're teaching you. This Methodist communist views. The group was organized in 1870 in Jackson, Tennessee. Church of Brethren. In 1708, Alexander Mack Schwarzenau. You know, that's a Naga. Oh, he took over a Naga name. Communists of Christ. Formed in 1872. Church of Jesus, Day, Church of Jesus Christ and Latter day Saints. American based international church. 250,000 members in 60 nations. These are all the churches that are members. In the United States. In the United States. These are all the churches that Rockefeller has funded. Through the National Council of Churches. Wow. So if you didn't know, now you know. Y'all know where the link at. It's Wikipedia, man. Look up list of National Council of Church members. See if your church is in there, man. All in the United States. And there's over 50. So it's real. But we only looking for food. I'm here you over here with the real shit. So... That reminds me of a con press conference I seen with uh, Donald Trump. I 
I mean, now I know that's not a good sign right there. <laughs> I know that's not a good sign right there because this is only a representation of the eight point star. It's half of it because it's two stars in one forms the eight point star. That's showing you this same shit. That's the NATO star. That NATO star is backed by this Rockefeller. So watch out. Watch out. Man, it's the Guardian, man. I'm just hitting you over here with some real shit. All right, so check it out. Winning the presidency, Donald Trump stated that... Before winning the presidency, Donald Trump stated that as president, he may not support countries within the North Atlantic Treaty Organization which haven't met defense spending guidelines. NATO recommends that 2% of a country's GDP be spent on its military, a qualification which is only met by the U.S., the U.K., Greece, Estonia, and Poland. Many feared that with Trump as president, the U.S. may withdraw from NATO entirely. So what would happen if... So NATO is the United Nations. They want to draw from the United Nations entirely. Hmm, could that be because what we just said? Hmm. The U.S. left NATO. Well, NATO has been called the cornerstone of collective defense by President Barack Obama, and it's been a guiding force for much of the... So why would Obama call the United Nations that when he know until how the United Nations started, what was the conglomerate of institutions that formed to build up to the United Nations. All started by the Rockefeller dollar. Now think about that. Think about all these years. Think about that. The 20th and 21st century. In the aftermath of World War II, as the Cold War was gearing up, a number... NATO conference in France. Ha! Uh -huh. Of European countries plus the United States agreed to support each other militarily in case of attack, implicitly from the Soviet Union. Originally, there were only 12 member countries, but today it consists of 28 states. This militarized alliance sees the United States as both its biggest beneficiary as well as the one taking on the most responsibility. Article 5 of the NATO Treaty states that, quote, an attack against one ally is considered an attack against all allies. And in Trump's eyes, this is a costly proposition. Article 5 was triggered for the first and only time just following September 11, 2001, and it led to a NATO-allied war in Afghanistan. Roughly a third of troops in the country for over a decade were made up of NATO forces working in the interest of the United States. Wow. But in exchange, the U.S. has comprised roughly three quarters of the entire group's defense spending, an amount Trump believes is too heavy of a burden, while few other members are not even meeting their recommended minimum. But pulling out of NATO or even decreasing the U.S.'s role in NATO... So what he basically saying is that they was basically extorting America out of so much money on defense, but the other countries weren't even paying nothing. So he's like, are we getting extorted? Hmm. Could be a dangerous proposition. Firstly, most of the member countries in NATO are not only relying on the U.S.'s military power, but its nuclear power, too. If that nuclear assurance is no longer there, any non-nuclear country could start building their own as a potential deterrent. Mm -hmm. Another issue is that this union of countries has almost never gone to war with its fellow members, which is reasonable when you know that an attack will turn all of your allies into enemies. This could also change without a stable NATO. Finally, since NATO was created to buffer Russia's interest in Europe, it actually seems to be working. In recent years, Russia has made incursions into neighboring Ukraine and Georgia, neither of which are NATO members. Meanwhile, many have pointed to Russian interest in the Baltic states, which are members of NATO, and have been seemingly safe from outright invasion, specifically on that basis. Problematically, while Trump is correct that many member states do not meet the recommended minimum military contribution, the Union appears to serve a larger function than simply a group of allies. Without the U.S. in NATO, the Union loses much of its power and funding, and one of the cornerstones of global peace could come crumbling down. Yeah, if right. But without the United States funding, United Nations would fall. If you're like me and love history, science, and exploration, you should check out Discovery Go, where you
where you can binge watch all seasons, current and past, of your favorite Discovery Channel shows. Check out the link in the description below to learn more. But while the United States does maintain a lion's share of NATO, the organization is more powerful as a group than it could ever be as a single country. So what exactly does NATO do, and how powerful are they really? Find out in this video. NATO is involved in peacekeeping missions across places like Afghanistan, Kosovo, and various regions in Africa. They manage ground, air, and NATO. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. What I was trying to show you is the fact that um, they did a press conference that uh, Trump had basically withdrawn. United States withdrawing from United Nations human resource. Alright. So let me show you that real quick. Because that's what we were talking about. A year ago, the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations criticized the U.N. Human Rights Council for what she called its hypocritical behavior. Human Rights Council, and sorry. Nikki Haley Nothing. said the U.S. would quit the council if it didn't change its way. It's hard to accept that this council has never considered a resolution on Venezuela. And yet it adopted five biased resolutions in March against a single country, Israel. It is essential that this council address its chronic anti-Israel bias if it is to have any credibility. It is correct to criticize the state of Israel for its actions. As said by Rabbi Lutz, you can, you can challenge the Israeli government's policies without being anti-Semitic. Comments such as True. this, a permanent agenda item investigating Israel's treatment of Palestinians, True. and the U.S.'s recent failure to prevent the U.N. General Assembly from condemning Israel's use of force in Gaza, finally made the Trump administration say enough on Tuesday. But when organizations undermine our national interests and our allies, we will not be complicit. When they seek to infringe on our national sovereignty, we will not be silent. We take this step because our commitment does not allow us to remain a part of a hypocritical and self-serving organization that makes a mockery of human rights. We could have withdrawn immediately. We did not do that. Instead, we made a good faith effort to resolve the problems. The U.S. has had a troubled relationship with the Council. When it was set up in 2006, President George Bush refused to join because he feared countries with poor human rights records would be able to sit on a panel intended to punish human rights violators. Key in Bush's decision making, the U.S. ambassador to the U.N. at the time, John Bolton. He's now President Trump's national security advisor. President Barack Obama then joined the council in 2009. He argued the U.S. would have more influence and give Israel more protection from negative resolutions in the process. Mm -hmm. Now the U.S. is leaving the Council again, and that has human rights groups around the world very concerned. They fear that without the American presence on the Council, it will be much less able to hold countries such as Russia, Syria, or North Korea accountable for the mistreatment of their citizens. Mm -hmm. also uh, so therefore, they ain't new. They're scared of Russia. And they're scared of China. Not on his own people. You can believe that. So. You got. Israel. Who. United States. Is basically. Protecting. Because. Of the mistreatment. Of people outside of. Jerusalem, what they call Jerusalem. So the way they're treating people that are non-Jews, right? We had that same problem, right? Remember, because they don't, they ain't rocking with Yahshua. So therefore, they ain't with, they ain't rocking with the heart. You know what I'm saying? They warriors. So therefore, they all warrior. So therefore, they're mistreating everyone, even. Ethiopian, even the African, um, so-called African-American Jews that's in Israel, they're mistreating them by not allowing them to have citizens. But the United States don't see far in that. They, they are saying that um, the United Nations are blaming on saying that they want to do something about that, right? Which is game. So they want to 
infiltrate Israel, right? And it's cool because the Most High said that ain't gonna be where the New Jerusalem is anyway. So on the other hand, they want to withdraw from the United Nations because the United Nations want to do something about that with Israel. But now they want to withdraw from the United Nations. Now withdrawing from the United Nations will give lose all these other countries power right that they were allowing to come into the United States and do all types of atrocities and also that'll lose the power over Israel also Israel will lose some power too because now it won't have the other countries protecting it you get it? America will just be, United States will just be protected. So therefore, now to be other countries trying to go in and prophesize what the Most High has planned for Israel. You get it? And now we're leaving the United Nations. You get it? So now the people here must do what, can do what they need to do according to their true faith. Because now, United Nations is funded by Rockefeller, you get it, who has a communist um, fable Christianity movement in the United States and all over the world. So now we withdraw from them, so now we're free to our faith, to our free salvation, to our freedom. So everything works out in the end because the Most High is His plan. Alright, so there, that's what I just wanted to hit y'all over the head with. That's what I want to hit y'all over the head with this too, though. This is crazy too. I wanted to show y'all this real quick. I wanted to show y'all this real quick too, man. And y'all can tell me is it good news or bad news? I need someone to uh, prophesy. Uh, this is all about fire and golfs, historic Milwaukee. This is where we at. Pow wow, this is Milwaukee, Wisconsin, sending black smoke billowing over downtown. This is the Trinity Evangelical, the Trinity Evangelical Lutheran Church. Is on fire, people. Firefighters battle a fire at Trinity Evangelical Lutheran Church at 9th, 9th Street in West Highland. This is near downtown. This is the biggest church downtown. This is a downtown Lutheran church on Highland Avenue in downtown Milwaukee. Now, this is a signification of what? The Lutheran Church, a signification is the evangelical Lutheran Church. Martin Luther, Magna Carta. I don't know, man. You tell me, man. You tell me. Let's look at a few pics. No. What does this signify? There's that star, you know that star you see on top of the Christmas tree? This is the four point star. But that eight point star you see on top of your Christmas tree. On top of your Christmas tree. What does this mean? I don't know. But I know there's that star. You see that star? Do you see that star? I don't know if this means paganism is over with. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. There's that star. 
star in a circle there's that star man I don't know man or it, or is it just a cross but that looks like the circle that circle that Methodist circle I don't know man but I don't know there you see the more is circle more you see that it's not just a cross you see that circle is more you know what I'm saying what y'all think man let me know circle Ooh, there you see really see it now there's that circle mm. yeah there you go wow there's that circle within the circle there you go bam there you go right there yeah, I don't know. I know they say that's a clock, but I don't know, man. It's looking, it's looking real Methodist. <laughs> and I don't know. Is that you know? It, I, and it, I think it's it's the internet, man. It's the internet. The internet is allowing us to come into so much truth that man, we just, a lot of this shit is falling, man, because it's not working. It's not working. All right. So now we just got to watch this Pope thing. Because remember the Pope of perdition. Remember the vicar of Christ. We know what vicar means. The Pope said he's the vicar of Christ. We know what vicar, man. Come on, man. Vicar is the anti. All right. So, you know, the Pope always saying he Christ. So, we, come on, man. So now we just, yeah, but we can see. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, but you know what? A beautiful thing happened today. I was talking to my brothers and sisters. Ty Battle. Ty Battle. Uh, Uno. Beautiful thing. Getting to the root. And um, AD, the truth seeker. Man, you know what? Uno always hitting us over the head with some real shit, man. So we got into about, you know, the dietary. You know, we got into it about a diet. And uh, we was just uh, talking about the corn, man, and how... You know, we always gonna, you know, we never gonna stop eating the corn until Uno hit us over the head with some real shit about the corn. How safe is the corn, all right, when you gluten free? How safe is the corn, period? Well, just to speed it up a little bit, man, when we break down the corn, basically the corn, the corn, the corn is wheat, therefore the corn is, uh, a grain grain is so hard man you can't grain don't even break down so that's why man like back in the day or if you ever pay attention when you eat a lot of corn and you uh, digest it right it don't digest that's why the corn you come out and in your boo-boo it just be corn it the corn don't even be broke down it be the corn how you ate it and it don't even be broke down so that should have told us right there that light should have went off, but it never did. You know what I'm saying? So, it's basically the corn, the peanuts, same thing. The peanuts being your boo-boo. They don't be broke down unless you, you know, chew them all the way up. But that's the thing, man. It's, that's the thing. This grain, it, that is not, it's not compatible to our, to our uh, digestive system. So, they can beat around it when little, they always beat around. They say, okay, wheat. Wheat is a grass widely cultivated cultivated for its seed a cereal grain which is a worldwide staple food okay so they just told you the wheat is a grain the many species of wheat together make up the genus trictacum the most to produce seed of hybrid cultivars on a commercial okay as done with maize because now when they say maize they're talking about corn right because they started this process over in Europe where they started to hibernate the maize and then they called it corn 
Alright. They call it corn. They call it corn, man. Europe only knew of maize, corn, after Columbus because it was domesticated in the Americas. What is the difference between rice, wild rice, wheat, and corn? Teff, buckwheat, uh, corn miller. Uh, what is the difference between wheat starts? Oh, I think that was a question answer. Oh, here we go. Okay, corn seed is actually a vegetable, a grain, and a fruit. <laughs> corn seed is a vegetable because it is harvest for eating. That's the only reason why. Usually, see how they word play with you? That's because they hibernated it. Usually sweet corn, when grain is harvested at the milk stage, corn seed is a grain because it is a dry seed of a grass species. That's why. It is a dry seed. There is no water in the seed, so that means that seed has some type of uh, chemical like sulfur, which is breaks down to, I don't know that big word. Um, Uno was mentioning that word today. Some, some uh, type of uh, haspinocyte or something. I don't know. I can't think of that big word, but what it is, it's dry, man. It don't have no water. And we water, you got to fill your cup up with water, man. You got to fill up with water, man. So therefore, you know. So it goes to tell, man. So if you've been eating the corn like I have, take a step back. The corn ain't no good for us, man, because it's straight hybridation. It's hybrid, man. It's, it's from a grain. The grain is dry, man. It'll dry you out. So therefore, stick to the water, man. L, it was beautiful. Good, good looking on that drop, Uno. That was beautiful. All right, so we learned something today, man. Can't rock with the corn, man. So we got to find something else. All right. So I know the, the corn, we found out the lemons is a bad pH, low pH. You can't rock with the lemons, but we got to place them with the lime. So what are we going to replace the corn with? Y'all let me know. Because I don't know. Y'all let me know what we going to replace the corn with. All right, because I was, man, I was rocking with the corn. All the whole tribe was. So, Uno put it down, man. Priest King. So, it's over for the corn, man. All right, man, I love y'all. But uh, before we leave, let me see something real quick. I want to hit y'all with, uh, I want to hit y'all with the, uh, Hit y'all with some scriptures. Mm -hmm. Chlorella is absolutely one of my favorite. This is matcha green tea. That's not chlorella. Chlorella. This is ashwagandha. Chlorella. I heard about chlorella. I think it's a herb. Y'all check that out. It's chlorella. Say it's a superfood. All right, but I want to hit y'all over the head with some scripture before we leave. Now I told you we're gonna start going through this New Testament, right? I know, I know, I know. You always got to bob and weed. We looking for food, man. Alright? And we don't run from nothing. So let's get in line, man. Remember, there is a uh, prophecy that you, Naga, must fulfill. Alright? So, let me tune up real quick. Man, come on, let's get back to the water a little bit, man. Come on. We can do fire. Yeah, matter of fact, let's do the fire. Let's see if we can do the fire. Hold on.
Let me see, hold up, let me see if we can do this far. No, we already did that. Let's see if we can do this far. Hold up my time. Y'all see it, man. We just gonna stick to this right here. I did want that fire though. I did want that fire though. Let me see some of this. Look, Marcus. Let's go here, man. Wait. All right, man. You got your scripts open. Now take out your Neva or whatever. I can't remember the name of it, but um. Let's go to the New Testament, man. What they call the New Testament. Let's go over Titus. Now, as we know, these are Paul's writings while he was locked up. Paul was in prison, okay, for, for teaching the gospels, the true gospel of Christ, right? That just means of the, of the anointed, the true gospel of the anointed, the Hamashiach, right? So it says, so it says, this is greetings from Paul. This letter is from Paul, a slave of Hawa, an apostle of the Hamashiach. I have been sent to proclaim faith to those Hawa has chosen and to teach them to know the truth that shows them how to live godly, lie. This truth gives them confidence that they have eternal life, which Hawal, who does not lie, promised them before the world began. And now, at just right time, he has revealed this message, which we announce to everyone. It is by the command of Hawal, our Savior, that I have been entrusted to this work for him. I am writing to Titus, my true son in faith, that we share. May Hawa be the father and Hamashiach, our savior, Hawashua, to, to give you grace and peace. I left you on the island of Crete so you could complete our work there and appoint elders in each town as I instructed you. An elder must live a blameless life. He must be faithful to his wife and his children must be elders who don't have a reputation for being wild or rebellious. For an elder must live a blameless life. He must not be arrogant or quick-tempered. He must not be arrogant or quick-tempered. He must not be a heavy drinker, violent or dishonest with money. Dishonest with money. Rather, he must enjoy having guests in his home. He must love what is good. He must live wisely and be just. He must live a devout and disciplined life. He must have a strong belief, strong belief in the trustworthy message he was taught 
he must have a strong belief in the trustworthy message he was taught. Then he will be able to encourage others with wholesome teachings and show those who oppose it where they are wrong. For there are many rebellious people who engage in useless talk and deceive others. This is especially true of those who insist on circumcision for salvation. Did you hear me? I said, for there are many rebellious people who engage in useless talk and deceive others. This is especially true of those who insist on circumcision for salvation. They must be silenced because they are turning whole families away from the truth by their false teaching. And they do it only for money. Even one of their own men, a prophet from Crete, has said about them, The people of Crete are all liars, cruel animals, and lazy gluttons. This is true. So, reprimand them sternly to make them strong in faith. They must stop listening to Jewish myths and the commands of people who have turned away from the truth. Did you hear me? They must stop listening to Jewish myths and the commands of people who have turned away from the truth. Everything is pure to those whose hearts are pure. If your heart ain't pure, then hot man, listen. But nothing is pure to those who are corrupt and unbelieving because their minds and consciences are corrupt. So people claim they know Hawa. People claim they know Hawa. People claim they know Hawa, but they deny him by the way they live. They are detestable and disobedient, worthless for doing anything good. As for you, Titus, promote the kind of living that reflects wholesome teaching. Teach the older men to exercise self-control to be worthy of respect and to live wisely. They must have sound faith and be filled with the love and patience. Love and patience. Similarly, teach the older women to live in a way that honors Hawa. They must not slander others or be heavy drinkers. Instead, they should teach others what is good. These older women must train the younger women to love their husbands and their children, to live wisely and be pure, to work in their homes and to do good, and to be submissive to their husbands, then they will not bring shame on the word of Hawa. In the same way, encourage the young men to live wisely, and you yourself must be an example to them by doing good works of every kind. Let everything you do reflect the integrity and seriousness of your teaching. Teach the truth so that your teaching can't be criticized. Then those who oppose us will be ashamed and have nothing bad to say about us. For the grace of Hawa has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. And we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world with wisdom, righteousness, and devotion to Hawa. While we look forward with hope to that wonderful day when the glory of our great Hawa Savior and Hawashua, the Hamashiach, will be revealed. He gave his life to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us, and to make us his very own people, totally committed 
to doing good deeds. Hallelujah. You must teach these things and encourage the believers to do them. You have then the authority to correct them when necessary. So don't let anyone disregard what you say. Do what is good. Remind the believers to submit to the government and its officers. They should be obedient, always ready to do what is good. They must not slander anyone and must avoid quarreling. Instead, they should be gentle and show true humility to everyone. Once we too were foolish and disobedient. We were misled and became slaves to many lusts and pleasures. Our lives were full of evil and envy and we hated each other. We too were foolish and disobedient. We were misled and became slaves to many lusts and pleasures. Our lives were full of evil and envy and we hated each other. But when Hawa our Savior revealed kindness and love, He revealed kindness and love through the Hamashiach. He saved us, not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He washed away our sins, giving us a new birth and a new life through the Holy Spirit, the Ruach. He generously poured out his spirit upon us through the Hamashiach, our judge. Because of his grace, he declared us righteous and gave us confidence that we will inherit eternal life this is a trustworthy saying and I want you to insist on these teachings so that all who trust in Hawa will devote themselves to doing good these teachings are good and beneficial to everyone do not get involved in foolish discussions about spiritual pedigrees. Do you hear me? Do not get involved in foolish discussions about spiritual pedigrees. Or in quarrels and fights about obedience to Jewish laws. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? I said do not get involved in foolish discussions about spiritual pedigrees or in quarrels about fights about obedience to Jewish laws. These things are useless and a waste of time. If people are causing divisions among you, because that cause divisions. If people are causing divisions among you, give a first and a second warning. After that, have nothing more to do with them. For people like that have turned away from the truth and their own sins condemned them. But they ain't going to tell you what their sins are. are they? They're not going to tell you that. But they're going to condemn them because all you got to do is watch them. And the time is going to pass and the time is going to tell that they denied. They denied the Father. So the final remarks. I am planning to send either Artemis or, Tic or Tichikas to you. As soon as one of them arrives, do your best to meet me at Nicopolis, for I have decided to stay there for the winter. Do everything you can to help Zenas, the lawyer, and Apollos with their trip. See that they are given everything they need. Our people must learn to do good by meeting the urgent needs of others. Our people must learn to do good by meeting the urgent needs of others. Then they will not be unproductive. Everybody here sends greetings. Please give my greetings to the believers. All who love us, may God's grace, may Hawa's grace be with us all. May Hawa's grace be with us all.
do I have to explain it? So man, I don't know where you at with it. I know where I'm at with it. I know where I'm at with it. And that reminds me of my brother Irvin Reed. Man, I wish I had his vocals right now. <laughs> I wish I had his vocals right now. Because you know what Irvin Reed would say? You know what Urban Reed would say, man? You know what Urban Reed would say? You know what Irvin Reed would say? Irvin Reed would actually say. So be very careful to follow everything Moses wrote in the book of instruction. Do not deviate from it, turning either to the right or to the left. Make sure you do not associate with the other people still remaining in the land. Do not even mention the names of their gods, much less swear by them or serve them or worship them. Rather cling tightly to Hawa, your God, as you have done until now. I'm trying to see where he said, where he said, ask for me. Soon I will die going away of everything on earth. Deep in your hearts, you know, every promise of the Lord, a wall has come true. Not a single one has failed, but as surely as a wall, your God has given you the good things he promised. He will also bring disaster on you if you disobey him. He will completely destroy you from this good land he has given you. If you break the covenant of a wall, your God, by worshiping and serving other gods, his anger will burn against you. You will quickly vanish from the good land that has given you. This stone has heard everything the Lord has said to us. This is what Joshua said. Joshua said to the people, how Yeshua said to the people, this stone, this stone has heard everything Hawah has said to us. It will be a witness to testify against you if you go back on your word to Hawah. So who are you going to worship? You going to worship the gods of the Amorites whose land we took? Or you going to worship the gods of your family members across the ocean? As for me, I'm going to worship Hawa, the God that brought, made Moses bring the tablets, the God that made a promise with his words. The God that brought us judges, that brought us 
Hamashiach. All that is your creator. The God that made the 70 elders prophesy. All that is your creator. So man, I'm out of here, man. We not above. Remember. Water, air, L, fire. The earth is your turf. All that is not above the firmament, man. We chase the hounds from the barrier. Vibration is law, and law is. <gasps> Whoa.